come and share briefly a minute or so just something God has done for you. Um, even though there's a five-week break, we'll come back with a great sense of expectation and excitement on the 30th. But if you've got a testimony, there's been fantastic healings and some very powerful moves of the Spirit. If you've got something that you think would bless people, I'd love you to come. Jeff will just help coordinate that for us. Who's first? Who's got testimonies to share? Six, six, six months ago, God took the second most important present out of my gift out of my life. He took my wife home, and it's been a um, emotional, strong struggle. I've had great support from my church, from my family. But most of all, my, most of my supports come from Jesus, and uh, it's been personal. It's been hard. I've just been to Cambodia for for the for the tenth time because we're, we're uh, my wife and I have been supporting Transform Cambodia over there for the last eight years since it started, and we've got ten four four sponsored children. Sorry, and it's just been very emotional. And while I was over there. Spending time with those children made me stronger in, in the Lord. I've been doing a lot of pushed into the Lord like I've never pushed into Jesus before in the last 20 years of being following him. But God is an amazing healer when you're really pushing into his word. Amen. That's the greatest thing that I can say. I can stand here now and say that Jesus is amazing. Any memory of my, my late wife, who was a worship leader, at our, my own church, back in Metro Church, I, I've stepped up in ministry, serving again in memory of her. But all the glory goes to Jesus yeah. and God Amen. for what he's done. Thank you. Thank you. Short and sharp and just give glory to God. It's going to profit everybody. Hi. Um, look, I've had so many healings over the last couple of years and i on um, during this week, I went to see the surgeon who um, removed my cancer, which was also healed because there was um, precancerous cells that disappeared with his second lot of surgery before he did the surgery. But he's in the Mount Hospital, and I couldn't find anywhere to park. Now I've had trouble with my knee for two years, and um, I ended up having to go up and down Jacob's ladder uh, with no pain from my knee at all. And I, I just could oh, not good. have done that six months ago. That's good. What can you say about Jesus? He's awesome. In March, I had an operation on the side of my head for a, a stage 2 melanoma. Um, originally, the biopsy that they took was a stage 1. And the dermatologist told me, if you are going to have any melanoma, that was the best one to have. But when the operation um, was undertaken, it came that it was stage 2. I have to leave out lots and lots of things. The surgeon told me that um, when he was going to go in to take all of it out, that there was a possibility that he was going to touch my nerve. And if he touched my nerve, I was not going to be able to move my eyebrow. I was not going to be able to move my eye. And that in a year's time, he'd have to operate from the top here and pull it up. And... The day of the operation, he told me he went down so deep, uh, down to the nerve, that I was not going to be able to move my eyebrow. I was not going to be able to see. Use my eyebrow and use my eye, <laughs> and I can see. Wonderful.
My next door neighbour, he's an old boy, an English fella, and this is more of a prayer request than anything. And uh, he's an atheist, but he does believe in God. My mum's prayed for him many times. And he's a cockney, and he speaks a bit like this. His name's Dave. You all right, son? What are you doing? He pull up on the side of the road with a lorry and unload this into another lorry line. That's the sort of fella he is. He's always got a story. And yesterday he pulled me up on the side of the road. And um, he said, Troy, he says, I'm going to die in two years. I said, what? And he said, the doctors have told me that I've got this and this on my lung and that on my lung and that on my lung. And I'll be dead in two years. And I said, no, you won't. And so I said, you're not going to be dead. He says, yes, I am. I said, no, you're not. So I'd just like to um, lift him up to God, to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, and just declare that he ain't going to die. He's yeah, going to live. Not die. Yeah, thank you, Lord. And uh, he's going to live, he's going to lift up his hands and he's going to praise God. He's going to praise the God of Abraham, he's going to praise the God of Isaac, he's yeah, going to praise the God of Jacob. Amen. He's going to lift him up. Yeah. Yeah, we're just so excited about Raw Church and everything that's happening there. My friend Sarah just gave me the elbow to just come and, and share. And yeah, we really honour um, the leaders that we've had that have supported us and mentored us in that, that growth of a team. And uh, thank you, Phil and Jeanette, for the permission to do what we do. You know, it's so exciting on a Sunday night to see young people walk off the street and they're still you know, addicted to drugs, they're still chained and, and bound by so many things. And we're just seeing them being set free. We're seeing salvation all the time, we're seeing people being healed, People, the young people just love it, they come and they just say so many positive things to us and at the same time God's blessing the team and giving us opportunity to grow and to be blessed and, and bless others as well so we're really thankful and humbled by the opportunity I just want to share that when, when, you, when your heart is to, to um, go to the nations to, to, to preach the gospel, God will meet you and God will open doors. Uh, a couple of years ago, we were, Anna and I were sitting in a Sunday service and Anna said, to see those people three rows ahead of us. Uh, we, they're strangers here. We've never seen them before. Let's greet them and make them feel welcome after the meeting. So we did. Well, we were planning to, at that time we were planning to go to Germany and it turned out that those strangers three rows ahead of us were a pastor and his wife who were visiting from Germany and they, we took them out to lunch and they invited us to go and stay with them for three weeks and to preach in their church. So, you see, God opens doors. Yeah. One, one more very brief word. I'm flying out to Germany on Christmas Eve and I'll be there for a month so if anybody remembers to pray for me I'll be preaching there and I'll be visiting the same church again and other places. Please. Goodbye, God Thank bless. You. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago Phil and Jeanette went on a cruise and Phil said on that night that um, they'd had great opportunities to um, serve God on the ship. Well, we came back from a cruise last week and um, I did what Phil did. I went to guest relations and said, look, is there a service tomorrow? And they said, no. So I said, okay, if I do one then. And they said, yes. So I, we had a service, Susan and I, and um, lots of people came. The following week, we had another one and more people came. And on the Friday and the next week, more people came. Mm. So people from all persuasions and none came to the services we had. And we were able to pray for people at the dinner table and all around the ship. So even though there were lots of people eating lots of food, there were so many needy people and sick people that mm. God was there with us. And as Phil says, church is where we are. Yeah, and right. it was amazing. Thank you. Mm. Okay. I'm sure we've all got some kind of testimony of God's goodness in 2014. And uh, one of the great ways of preaching is called gossiping the gospel. Just tell people the things that God does. Perth's ready to listen. They're not ready to come to church, but they're ready to hear testimonies. They're ready to know that there is a God who loves them and cares for them. 
and can save them and heal them and deliver them. They're ready. I'm telling you now, they're ready. The scripture says that the harvest is white. They don't understand church. They don't like religion. But they're looking for truth. They're looking for answers. So your testimony, look what the Lord's done for me. No one can argue with it. They'll listen and they'll weigh it up and I believe that seed won't return to God void. Fantastic. Say with me, God is good. All the time God is good. God is good all the time. I've got you there. God is good all the time. All the time God is good. God is good all the time. Amen. Thanks, Mike. Blessings. Fantastic. Well, I've been in the last meeting of the year. I said, hey, Lord, let's turn up the heat. Let's leave the best wine to the last. God wants us to go out of this year with a mighty bang in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Fasten your safety belt. God loves us too much to leave us the way we are. He doesn't want us to go into 2015 carrying the burden we brought into 2014. And there's still time to deal with it. You know how many sleeps till Christmas? There's still time to deal with it. If you can just make a decision before God, Lord, I'm going into a new year different. I'm going to be changed by the Spirit. The very things that are burning in my heart, I'm going to prepare to do it in the new year. God will honour that. You see, God doesn't do anything without first beginning to put dreams inside your heart. He speaks prophetically. He doesn't do anything without first telling the prophets or a prophetic people. I, I know that God is speaking to people about next year. So many people are already saying it's going to be a different year. This year's been a pretty hard year. Maybe you say that at the end of every year, but this year's been a really hard year. I can say that on behalf of Jeanette and myself. It's been a hard year. It's good. God's been good and... I'm still smiling. You know, after all we've been through, we've still got joy. But we're believing that next year is a greater year. And how would you know that? Number one, when there's pruning, when there's a cutting back, when there's a chopping off of things that aren't right, you know that you're about to bear more fruit. It's a bit of a giveaway, isn't it? So when it's been hard and the hand of the Lord's been heavy and the Word of God has been sharp, cutting away things, you know the next season bear much fruit. So for many who've had that kind of year, expect a greater year next year, a harvest, multitudes coming into the kingdom, people getting saved all over the place. Perth is ready. When we prayed the other night, the Lord said the harvest is white. And when you look at the Greek language used, it says it's overripe. Should have been picked earlier. It's just hanging on the tree ready to be picked. That's the, that's the nature of what's happening in the city. People are sick and tired of being sick and tired. People are sick and tired of being bound and locked and chained. And so you and I have the truth of the gospel, but we need to dream the dream God's put in us. We need to be creative in our expression. You know, the wineskin is the way we do things. The wine doesn't change. It's the truth of the gospel. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. It's still a miracle working Jesus. But the wineskin, the way we do it, maybe needs to change. Maybe that is why people don't relate well to us. We do things the same way we've done it for so long. But I believe God's breaking out and you and I are the ones who are dreaming to do things a bit differently. It's amazing how many people are meeting, whether it be small groups, whether it be in homes, whether it be in a pub, whether it be, as I've said before in Melbourne, the railway station, Christians gathering together, doing church differently. And uh, we're finding that they do it that way because the sphere of influence changes. We still do what we know to do. We gather like this because it's important for us. We get blessed. But not everyone understands this. So we go and say, well, I've got a sphere of influence at work, on the sport field, in my neighbourhood. And we can begin to use the way that we relate to people to give them the truth. The truth's in us. Jesus in us, the hope of glory. But the wineskin is changing. And that's exciting. It means that a new generation is going to rise up and they're going to do church in such a relevant way that the multitudes are going to come into the kingdom. And yet we still gather like this because that's what church does. Two or more gather and we listen, we hear, we become, I call this a tactical headquarter where we get instructions from the Spirit. I read in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and goes on to 12 and 13 about the, the Spirit. It says there are many different operations but God is the source of it. You'll see tonight things happening in the meeting and you can discern that was God. You'll discern it. 
How do you discern it? Number one, where Jesus is lifted up and he's acknowledged as Lord, you know that's the work of the Holy Spirit. There are some people who want the miracles but they don't want the Lord. You can't have a miracle without God. You can have a set of circumstances that look really, really good and you might use the word miracle, but miracles come from the hand of God. According to scripture, that supernatural source of power is what makes for miracles. The atmosphere here tonight is ready for miracles to pop out all over the place. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Amen. God wants to do it. Someone has come into the meeting and there's a lot of pain coming down your left shoulder. We we start with some of this and we just get faith to fill the, the atmosphere. Who's that tonight? You just find there's a lot of pain coming down on the shoulder, the neck, down the side. Who's that? I want to pray for you. Maybe a visitor. Often that's the way it works, but you don't have to be a visitor. Who's got pain in this side here? Can we pray for you? Just stand and just let God just come upon you. On that side there. Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, the authority of Jesus. We say we rebuke this condition, break its power. Holy Spirit, come upon him. Never again to be a problem. In the name of Jesus, there it is, the power of God, the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the power of Jesus of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord. Amen, in the name of Jesus. Let the power come. Don't hold him in the sense of keep him up yet, just there. Father, we see that power going right into the bone, the marrow of the bone, the tissues, the muscles, and we say, Lord, whatever the problem was, he'd be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Someone else has got the same kind of pain, but it's coming down the hip. That's just... That's, did you have your hand up for something, son? What is it, son? Come. I can't heal you, but Jesus can. Shoulder? All the way down. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch this man. Touch him, Lord God, because he's yours. Touch him, Jesus. Touch him, Jesus. Touch him, Jesus. Power of God, come upon him. Can you just stand up again? Just move your arm around a bit till the pain's gone. Tell us when it's gone. In the name of Jesus. Pain, you let him go in the name of Jesus. Pain is part of the curse. As I says, Jesus took pain and sickness upon himself by his stripes were healed. Father, by the laying on the hands, we command this whole thing to come into line. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ. Who's the one who's got problem with the hips or pain coming down the hip? Come down. Keep, keep, keep thanking him until that's released. Tell us when it's released because that's, that'll help us. Which side? No, it's the Okay, all right. Just reach up, touch Jesus. Take a miracle. You receive it, take it. Remember the atmosphere is charged with miracle power. Ah. <laughs> is, it, is that pain gone? Has <laughs> the pain gone? <laughs> Great, you can sit down then. <laughs> by the fruit you know, it's by the fruit you know. And that is one fruit loop. Someone who's got a reflux issue and it's happening tonight, the burning in the in the esophagus. He's got a reflux problem. Just right where you are, Deb, just thank him. Reach up and receive the, the power of Christ. Father, we thank you for healing that reflux issue. I think there's more than one person who's got a digestive issue and there's a lot the acid build up in the in the uh, esophagus. Who's that? Someone else? A fellow was that someone else? Is that why you're standing up the back? Just put your, put your hand on the chest there, thank you for this. Bro, would you come across? Just if you don't mind, God's going to do a number on you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Father, we thank you for him as he comes. Touch him, 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 touch him. Touch him, Jesus. Touch him, Jesus. Touch him, Jesus. God is restoring the call of God upon your life. The Lord says you've been called even as a young one. And situations keep coming to block it, but the Lord says he's releasing you tonight to fulfil the call of God. 
power of God's coming on you, not just to heal you, but to set your spirit free. Hallelujah, Lord. Father, we say everything that's crowded in, all the cares and the burdens, we command you to lift off in the name of Jesus and let your power touch him. Let your power touch him. There it is, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. The spirits attached, get out and get off, let him go in Jesus' name. Get off, get off, get off. Just a couple of brothers come with him here, just sit, help him get set free. Rod, you can help him. Just command those spirits to leave on the breath. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. It's just some deliverance taking place and he'll be free to follow the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. God is here. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. He's the almighty God. He's here. He's here. He loves us. He loves us. Somebody's got all the pain in their wrist coming through into the hand. Who's that? Been there for quite a while. Just come, son. Walk into Jesus. Whoa! You've got... Sore shoulder and esophagus and wrist. I'm just glad you're still alive. Hallelujah. Get him, Lord, in Jesus' name. Get him, Lord. There's a power coming on you now. Thank him for it. Thank him for it. Thank him for it. When you came into the meeting, at one point I looked up and there was fire coming down on you. There was fire coming down on you. You need, a, you need a Holy Ghost baptism of fire for things have been spiritually dry and the Lord says he's quickening things up. Therefore next year is different, the Lord says. There's going to be change, there's going to be movement, there's going to be ministry, it's going to be so full on for you. You need fire. Burn off the dross, Lord. Cut him free. At the same time, you heal him where he hurts. Shoulder, esophagus. What else? The wrist. Remember, we just read that the operations are from God. God is operating. God is working. God is doing something that a medical doctor can't do. He is the great physician. He goes right into the cause. He doesn't treat symptoms. He treats causes. He goes into the cause. That's what's happening here in the name of Jesus. Feel that fire burning in you? Increase, 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 increase. Just fan it, a few people in the spirit. Fan him a bit more, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Someone who's got a lot of pain coming down their knee, right knee I think it is. Who's that? Come on, this is just, this is just hors d'oeuvres. Just to warm us up so he's hungry for more. Who's got a problem with their knee? Yeah. Okay, just receive your healing right there. Thank him for it. Father, someone stand behind him. Father, we thank you for Neil. We thank you for the calling upon his life. We thank you for the the gifting upon his life. We thank you, Lord, that his knee is healed, 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 healed. Heal Neil. In Jesus' name. There's the power coming on you now. Power's Power's on you. Power's on you. Power's on you. Power's on you in Jesus' name. Remember, it's an encounter you have to have yourself. It's an experience you have with Jesus so that you know it's not just talk. But you experience his love. You experience his power. Hallelujah. Father, we see the whole leg. It's just like an anaesthetic of the spirit coming on it and totally healed in the name of Jesus. Okay, together we're going to say fire. You ready? One, two, three. Fire! Fire! Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Someone who has a problem with swallowing and it's almost like a choking sensation that comes, is that you find that you, you, you're not able to swallow properly and there's, your throat seizes up, who's that? How's it going? Looking good? Hey, bro? Feel all right? Okay. You yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. No, the Lord will sort it out. This brother's actually saying he's under a specialist in terms of not being able to swallow. So we agree that what God has begun, God will finish tonight. Just face the people only because you're so good looking, they love to see you. Father, we're asking that you would finish the healing work, finish the healing work, finish the healing work. We respect the work of the specialist, but we have a specialist, specialist. His name is Jesus. Father, come right in and bring the healing in Jesus' name. There will never be a problem again. God is for you, he's not against you. Father, I thank you right now. Total release right down the esophagus through the digestive system, healed and whole. Ready for some fire? Church ready? One, two, three. Fire! Burn it out, Lord. Burn it out. Any spirit that was attached, you get out and you get off in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Any spirit attached, get out and get off in Jesus' name. Leave on the breath. Get out and get off. Cough it out, man, in the name of Jesus. Any spirit attached, holding him, get off. Get off him. Get off him in the name of Jesus. There was already deliverance taking place down here, but I can see another thing trying to rise up. Get out and get off in the name of Jesus. Church, get used to this because this is the work of Jesus. If you read the four Gospels, you'll find the deliverance work of Jesus is... Is, is there as part of the healing ministry. He delivers people. He sets them free from demonic oppression and bondage. He breaks the power of curses. He cancels assignments that have come from hell. And we're set free and made whole. Thank, just thank him and praise him. Father, we see a complete work. We see a total, complete deliverance in Jesus' name. Someone is having a problem with their eyes in the sense that it, there's a lot of pain behind the left eye. Who's that? Just come... In the name of Jesus. Who's that? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just begin to thank him and praise him. Who's got a problem in their eye? Just there's a pressure behind the eye that gets into the painful stage. Come. Rodney, is that you, son? Come. If you've seen this boy last week, he's the boy who was running around the church with a white flag, remember? Under the anointing. Yeah? And what happened when you ran around the church? Jeanette, can I just have that? Because I remember the Lord says something's happening. Some people could think, oh, it's all a bit strange. What happened when you were literally running around with the flag? Chains broke off, eh? I had chains broke off me. I've been suffering with depression and anxiety for for a while now. And um, chains broke off me that night, eh? I got healed. And what is it now? the eye. Father, we ask that you just touch his left eye in the name of Jesus. We thank you for Rodney. Thank you that he's going to run with fire, Lord God. Help save his generation. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's the power coming on you. Just thank him. Just thank him. Just thank him. Father, we see that whole thing fully resolved in the name of Jesus. The nerve damage be released, be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Was there, was there pain? Tonight, was there pain, pressure behind the eye? A little bit. Yeah. Is it constant? Is that finished? Is it healed? You're not doing it anymore. That means you must be healed. Yeah. Well, someone said, I didn't think it could be. Till it happened to me. And someone else sitting there, oh, I don't think it's true. Till it happens to you. Knowing God is to experience God. It's not to talk about him. People often say to me, where is your God? Because they don't know how to experience God. It's like a, a tale of the past or maybe one day he comes again. But what about now? He's here now. And for those who are born again, his spirit is one with us. He lives in us. And that's where you sense his anointing and his presence and his power. But for those who don't know him, he's, he's here. And he wants to meet you. He wants you to meet him in his presence. There's fullness of joy. Who's been a Christian just maybe in the last couple of months? Who's just become a Christian? Is there anyone? Just, I, want to, I just want to pray for you. Come, son. I'm sure there are others, unless, of course, they're not at this meeting. Who's only just given their hearts to the Lord? Okay. 
a couple of people dobbing their friends in up there. <laughs> Father, we just say that the good work you've begun, you finish. The good work you've begun, you finish. Thank you for him, Jesus, that he's got the courage to come publicly, Lord, and the courage to be changed, healed and delivered. The Lord says that the work's advanced. God's been doing a quick work because of the amount of prayer you've been getting, but there's more to do, so keep yielding to God. Keep staying with Christian friends and be a good boy. <laughs> Father, we just thank you for him. Reach out to him and say, he's blessed, he's blessed, he's blessed, he's blessed, he's blessed. We cut every chain, every desire for drugs, we cut every chain that would pull him, try and pull him back. We say, he's free in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. You know, there's resistance to this meeting tonight and that's always a good sign. It means that God's going to do something big. I can feel resistance. Hallelujah, that's a good thing. Why don't we pray in the Spirit just for a few couple of minutes. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we break every chain, we break every chain, we break every chain, we break every chain. We break every chain. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we break psychic power in the name of Jesus. Break your power, break your power in the name of Jesus. We break uh, familiar spirits, we break divination in the name of Jesus. Get out of get off in the name of Jesus. We release freedom in the Holy Ghost, freedom in the Holy Ghost, freedom in the Holy Ghost, freedom in the Holy Ghost. I say it again, we break witchcraft in the name of Jesus, we break witchcraft, we break witchcraft, we break witchcraft in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord, where the Spirit is Lord, there's liberty, liberty, freedom, liberty, freedom. Where the Spirit is Lord, there's freedom, there's liberty in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, free to sing, free to dance, free to shout, free to laugh. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Break every chain. We 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 break every chain. This is not to hurt anybody, but those, those who are still into witchcraft and occult practices, uh, that power will break, but you've got a desire change. Because it can break in the meeting, but you can pick it up on the staircase going home. Spirits are attracted when the heart is towards that kind of activity. That's what I actually feel in the meeting. I feel that people who dabble with those things, it's not a criticism, it's not a condemnation, it's just an explanation as to why it's harder to get into the spirit when those spirits that normally would bind you are still attached. They can't do great damage in the meeting, but they'll follow you and you're out of here and uh, for most of us we say no way I'm, I'm walking with Jesus the enemy hates his, even those who follow him people think oh the devil you know he, I'm with him yeah well he'll turn on you he will turn on you at a given time he'll turn on you when you're, you're most vulnerable when you haven't got support he'll turn on you that's why I say to people come to Jesus before the doomsday rush there's coming a day when multitudes are going to come fleeing out of darkness it's going to get so gross on the earth. Isaiah 60 says, gross darkness will cover the earth, but the glory shall be upon the church. Hallelujah. The two kingdoms will be seen to be manifesting fully together. I know which side I'm on. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We were on the other side, but now with the truth, we've, we've chosen Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Kendall, I don't understand it, but I feel something. I just... I don't know whether you've got something to say, but you've got an anointing coming on you. You don't have to say anything. We love you regardless. You carry something very important for the city. You do. You carry something important for the streets, the clubs, the pubs. I've been feeling it all night just watching him out there. I thought, this, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't care what's going to happen as long as Jesus is glorified. Uh, what does it say in the Bible? Pro proclaim um, freedom to the prisoners. Yeah. Um, when the revival takes place, there's going to be a lot of guys from prison getting set free. And uh, I had a vision in 203 when I first got saved and I was walking with the Lord a bit closer. He gave me a vision of uh, uh, droves of prisoners coming out full on for God. And uh, I've just recently done a nice scheme, which was virtually impossible for me to do with my criminal record. And I... I 
I've done that, I've started a business and lo and behold I've just found out that all the people are from Potter's house that I was doing the course with, the Denise people, and a guy just came out of prison and needed help and they put they know praying in the morning, my name gave, God gave them my name and uh they got, told me to come down and meet him and uh give him support on baptizing him tomorrow and um he gave his heart the Lord he's baptized get by baptizing him tomorrow. But uh where it was impossible for prisoners to get out and get into the knee scheme and get a light, get a, get a, get a life, since I did that course there, for this, they're uh, now going to sponsor prisoners next year. And they want me to uh, jump, in, jump on board with them and uh, uh, help them in that area because these guys are elders and stuff in churches, but they're doing that as well. And uh, they want, want my support. And... Um, a mate of mine who's on our Bible, in our, our men's group, he's on the uh, prison fellowship and he's, he, can, uh, he t- says who, who comes and goes. He's an ex-prisoner himself. Other guys just got, like at the men's group on uh, Thursday night, there was what, four prisoners, four guys, you know, just recently got out of jail, you know, ex-offenders. So God, you know, God's going to start off with guys that were full on for evil and make them full on for good. I know that for sure. Guys that have faced death for Satan, and they're going to face death for Jesus. I'm telling you the truth. Those sorts of fire-filled believers are coming to this city. And don't be surprised, fellas, when you're sitting next to a fully tattooed guy, 666 tattooed on his head. I've seen it in jail. Guy, I'm telling you now, guy, there's a sergeant in arms of the rebels. He came to the Lord, and this guy had satanic shit, pardon the language. All over him. Yeah. yeah, had satanic stuff. So, you know, don't, don't be surprised when you come here and you see 50 or 60 guys that don't look like they belong here. Yeah. <laughs>
So those of us who are called to be around lots of people, that's what a city is, obviously, that we, we are given people all around us, whether it be family or friends or neighbours or colleagues or whatever. could be partners in crime, doesn't matter. They're people. And God says, I'll give you those people that you might have influence over them with the power of the gospel. And so see people differently. See the city differently. See your suburb differently. Understand that God's put you there for a reason. We, we read last week in Luke 19 where Jesus wept over Jerusalem. He said, Jerusalem, don't you understand the things that are going to make for your peace? There was a visitation of the Lord and the place didn't recognise it. They didn't understand what was happening. And I find that people who are bound by religion don't understand what God is doing. So they just keep repeating the same pattern. Paul said to Timothy, in the last days people will have that form, the outward form, but they'll deny the power. There's, there's no shortage of religion in the world. It's everywhere. It's causing a lot of problems. But those who have the power of God's love working in them, you won't be caught up in this endless circle of activity. You'll be saying, what is it, Lord? What do I say? What do I do? Where do I go? And that's what a missionary is, the one who's sent to go and preach the good news and heal the sick and deliver the captives. That's who you are. That's who I am. Luke chapter 19. Get, get ready for the breakthrough moments. Get ready for the, the, the uh, prophetic season that's coming up. I've already given you a tip off as to what the next season is. When there's pruning, then there is prolific fruit bearing. If you've had a wonderful year without any problems, well, God bless you. You come lay hands on me. But if you've had the kind of uh, season where the word's been heavy and it's been strong and it's been, it's been sent like an axe and it's bringing change and, and you think, oh my gosh, it's getting a little bit difficult. That's, that's the sure sign that God's stripping things back so that you're left just with him and relying on nothing and no one else. And then we go and bear much fruit for his glory. I know that's the season. Hallelujah. And so we, we, next year is a different year. It's a great year. It's going to be a powerful year. In Luke 10, chapter 1, sorry, Luke chapter 10, verse 1, it talks about Jesus sending out the 70 and how he anointed them to go and begin to prepare the way for him. And this is your task and my task in this city. Luke 10, verse 1, After these things the Lord appointed 70 others, and he sent them two by two before his face into the city and the place where he himself would come. And he said unto them, The harvest is great, but the labourers are few. Pray therefore that the Lord of the harvest, he'd send forth labourers into the harvest. And I'll send you forth as lambs, it says, even in the midst of wolves. So we know that there's some pretty hard people out there. We know that there are those who haven't got the Spirit of God within them. And because of their own pain and frustration, people are operating out of their wounds and there's a lot of hurt, a lot of pain. This, this week alone has been pretty horrendous. Even just the reports, you know, the Sydney situation is very painful and difficult. All those kids killed in, in, in Peshawar, I mean, that's, that was, that's pretty horrendous. Today's news, eight children stabbed to death in, in Cairns, all from one family. Does, does that, it just grips your heart with pain. You think, how... We know how it can be. No, you said, how can this be? We know how it can be. You know there are two kingdoms. And you know people with unresolved issues, the, 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 the enemy is attracted as well. He comes to brokenness and he tries to use his demonic powers to use people. Hurt people hurt people. You and I have hurt people because we were hurt and we gave what we had. You only give what you've got. Such as I have, I give. That's the principle of the book of Acts. Such as I have, I give. Well, if it's hurt and pain and fear, that's what you start giving in your relationships. But Jesus is, he says, I'm, but I'm going to change you first. I'm going to heal you and deliver you. That's what this kind of meeting's designed to do. And the thousand others throughout the city. People come together. They acknowledge Jesus is here. Jesus is allowed to move. You know, the wineskin's not so tight that he can't move and he starts to do things. Not everyone can handle these kind of meetings. But, but Pastor Phil, it's a bit out of order. He says, no, not, nowhere near out of order. You want out of order? Read the book of Acts. I mean, you, you've got absolute organised chaos when the Holy Spirit breaks open. Hallelujah. Roll it on, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. It's coming to the city. I know it's coming to this city. God's just testing hearts. Can you handle different? Can you handle change? Can you handle freedom? Can you handle the Holy Spirit moving? Are you embarrassed 
when someone's you know slain in the spirit, some people can't handle that. I mean, come on. Christianity 101. When God moves, things have to change. I mean, when God comes, what has to give? We have to give. God's not going to change. He says, you have to give. You bend, you bow, let me have my way. And so you'll start to see more and more and more and more and more. And Mark, I feel the Lord saying that the change in your life is ordained by the hand of God. Just, if you don't mind, you and wifey come. If you do mind, come anyway. <laughs> that This season that God's brought change, when you thought it was going to work that way and all of a sudden it's not, the Lord says he's still behind it. He's actually saving you from something which would have done you damage down the track and it would have brought deep, very deep rejection. Even though now you're feeling, or we feel whatever you're feeling, pain, it would have been far worse had you kept going in that direction. So the Lord says, uh, you know, rejoice. I've rescued you. Because it was going to go into some area of dead religion and bondage and rules and regulations, condemnation, guilt and shame. And the Lord said, I pulled you out of it. So just wait on him for, the, for new orders. You can hang around us in the meantime if you want to. Can I tell the people a little bit? Just a little bit. These guys were in ministry and were to be ordained in a certain group and the whole thing went sour. And God's just saying to them, he was behind it. He said, I rescued you. Isn't that good? Isn't that beautiful? He loved you too much to see you go into it. So Father, I just impart a grace now that these guys would be able to handle this season. They would find that God who loves them so much has spared them, Lord, further bondage and pain. In Jesus' mighty name. Declare over this man that he will still rise up as a pastor. The Lord says, you've got a pastor's heart. The Lord says, you still care about the broken. The Lord says, you know your own story and your background, where you've come from. The Lord says, you're going to be a very important uh, piece in the Lord's hand. You're going to be a very important work piece for God. The Lord says, you're going to hold up many trophies of grace. The young men and women who got saved, even from the highways and the byways. So the Lord says, rejoice in this season. Rejoice in this season. Forgive and rejoice and move on in the name of Jesus. Just reach out to him. Father, just release him from the burden and the pain and the hurt and the fear. Release, we release, we release, we release, we release. In Jesus' name. Let it all go. I'm going very tentatively. Come on, In front of everybody. Come on. These guys have come up from Bunbury because... Just because they've come up from Bunbury. <laughs> but they've got a story to tell too of deep disappointment in ministry. You know, I'm going to make some t-shirts. I was in ministry and I survived. <laughs> because I tell you why. When you are in ministry and you get the call and you respond to it, one of the first things you notice is the opposition to the call. When you take your position... There's the opposition. And it comes from left field. You didn't expect it. You didn't plan it. You didn't think it was going to happen. It's happened to these guys. So let there be a work of restoration tonight. But the Lord says the call remains, son. And daughter, the call remains. Nothing's changed. The call remains. You're still going to be that man possessed of the Holy Ghost. You're still going to be that wild teacher of the Spirit. You're still going to have a breed of, of this generation that are going to come to Christ, unchurched, unskilled in the Word, and you're going to love them, and you're going to lead them, and you're going to teach them, and you're going to train them. Again, the Lord says, I've spared you too. Otherwise you would have been caught and locked into something in a wrong spirit. There was a great mixture. There was the Holy Spirit, but there was also a lot of manipulation, control, witchcraft. And the Lord said, it's damaged you. I'm asking God before this people to take the damage off him. To take the damage off him. To take the damage off him. Let it go, son. Let it go. Command the damage to get out and get off. The hurt, the wound, the betrayal, the pain, the anguish, any spirit attached. Get out and get off on the breath. Let cough it out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Get out. Get off. In the name of Jesus. Get out and get off. Foul demons, get off, get off, get off. Just pray quietly in the spirit, church. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You're called into full time ministry. You're called into full time ministry. You're called into full time ministry. The Lord says, Your hands will be so 
powerful for healing and deliverance. So powerful, so powerful, so powerful. People who have got a healing ministry, would you come and lay hands on this girl? People who know how to heal the sick, come and lay hands on her in part. Come. People who know how to heal the sick, come lay hands on her. The compassion of your heart is going to heal the sick. It's going to deliver the captives in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Even a healing gift, it may not be a full ministry yet, just a Pastor Madeline, come. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We wipe away the reproach, we wipe away the words that have been spoken, we break the disappointment and the discouragement off in the name of Jesus. Get off. Get out and get off in the name of Jesus. We pray for the children that they be safe and they be sound in the name of Jesus. And Lord, fill them, Lord, with the anointing, fill them with the Holy Ghost, fill them with the glory, fill them with the glory, fill them with the glory. I need a couple of fathers to come and just lay hands on this boy. Come, a couple of spiritual fathers, spiritual fathers, come. Lay hands on him. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Heal and deliver, heal and deliver. Yeah, 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 yeah. The biggest thing is the Lord says it's finished. The night's finished. The night season's finished. The night season's finished. The night season's finished. The night season's finished. See, what we're doing now, we're repairing the breach. We're standing in the gap for them, the way things are, the way things should be. We're relaying the foundations of the waste place. In Jesus' name. Yeah, that's right. Thank you for hanging in. This is life changing. Fresh inspiration. Fresh inspiration. New husband. New husband. New vision in Jesus' name. Hey! Just felt the Lord said more miracles, more miracles. More miracles in your ministry, more miracles, more miracles, greater miracles. But also he's going to allow you to um, advertise through media some of the miracles, especially the overseas miracles. The Lord says he's going to, people need to hear what he's doing. Okay, surgery finished. Do you know what you look like lying there with the blue cloth all over you? Who cares? Yeah. You know what? Come and tell them how you feel. Keep that thing on, it's wonderful. It suits you. It's an important part of your healing if, if you're able to just to say what's happened and what's happening. No, no, don't take it off. It's your mantle. I want to wrap it around if you don't want to it. Um, I was in this church probably 15 months ago before we went away to um, Middle Africa, Zambia. We felt God had led us to Zambia and he confirmed his word by hundreds of different ways. 
And we we did the right thing. We sharpened the spear of our lives, and we prayed and we fasted, and and, and it felt like the hand of God just picked us up as a spear and hurled us. And we got there, and it was like it would have been nice if we went to a place that had no no religion already, had no gospel already. It was like we hit the stone wall of a church, and the shaft of the spear smashed and fell to the ground, and there was no one there to deliver, no one to help. It was the, it was the most difficult time of our life, and then in trying to reconcile uh, when we when we got back, uh, those who supported us, I, was so, uh, I suppose we were too ashamed to talk to. Um, those in our own own communities, our own church community, sort of laughed at. Well, we told you it was going to happen. You know, that no one knew. Like we knew it was God. He confirmed it the whole way. One year and one day, to the you know, exactly from the time we got home, we were just driving around Donnybrook, and we just felt to call into this beautiful little old lady who just happened to pray for us. And the words that she spoke came straight from the heart of the Father and said, "I had to send you. You were the first. That, that, that church is going to get another knock, and they're going to go a little bit deeper. But for for a year we, we we wrestled and we struggled to try and reconcile. God, that was that took a year of our time, a year of our finances, a year of our children's lives, a year of everything, and we didn't understand. We had no we had no understanding in our mind. We couldn't rationalise anything. So we came here tonight because. Because for the last week, I basically told God, I'm out, I'm finished, I don't want to do this anymore. Just give me my nice job, my nice car, nice house, nice family and, and just leave me alone. This cost my things too hard. Funny seems to have changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be the only real thing that matters. Yeah. So I thank you for the blue trophy. <laughs> you don't need it back, do you? It's all yours. <laughs> so thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. It'll sign that thing if you want us to. <laughs> well, you know what? That's what it's all about. If you can't get restored in church, I mean, what's the point? If you can't get delivered in church, what's the point? If you can't get healed in church, what's the point? And that is the point of why we gather. So that people profit, they bless. Yeah, I've got all sorts of notes here, but I'm, you're not going to go too far into them. Love the city. Love the people. See what God sees. He sees the brokenness. He sees the hearts. He hears the cry. And then Jesus, as I said in Luke 10, he sends his church before him. He says, go and prepare the people. Witness. Give testimony. Pray for them. Because I'm coming into that city. And although Jesus abides within, within us, he's going to come into the atmosphere over the entire city. The heavens already opened. You can feel it. And he's just going to come, as it were, and he's going to cover the city with his love. I know it. And everyone who's got a heart for ministry will have their hands full. That's what harvest means. We haven't had harvest time. I mean, there are some big churches that lots of people, but generally we haven't had the harvest time. It's coming. And I told you how you know, because the pruning's happened and it's still happening. So the people are coming. And the mandate from Isaiah is that if you would repair the waste places, if you will relay the foundations, if you will help people by standing in the gap. You know, the gap is 
between the way things are and the way things should be. That's what we did with this couple tonight and that's what we did with uh, Mark and his wife. We stood in the gap, so they've been hurt, they've been wounded. We'll stand between the way it is and the way it should be. And Jesus just did an operation. The Holy Spirit just came and put them from one position to another. It's done. It's already happened. Emotions may vary. You might still have a you know, bad hair day because it's, everything's... But deep in the spirit, the breach has been healed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what God does. And so our heart is for this season of Christmas and not everyone celebrates Christmas, I understand that, but family time, it's a cultural festival. It's the biggest cultural festival in the world. I understand not everyone is into the Christmas thing because of whatever, but it's a great opportunity to give witness to love, to the fact that love looks like something. God sent his son Jesus. Now we know he didn't come on December the 25th, but we can still use it as a fabulous opportunity to sow in seeds of truth into people's hearts and minds. People ha- have a God consciousness in the Christmas season. They probably won't let you go too deep, but get enough seed in there that the Holy Spirit can put that seed deeper and deeper and deeper as the need is. And so uh, if the fire of God is upon us, then we will burn with a passion to do the work of the ministry. Remember I said the wine won't change. It needs to be full on. Holy Ghost wine, but the way we do things needs to change. And I want to finish by thinking, speaking on Nehemiah, just how Nehemiah had this burden in his heart. He he was the king's cupbearer. You know what a cupbearer is? A cupbearer is the one who checks that the wine and checks that all that goes to the king is safe. And literally it passes through this person who's protecting the life of the king. Nehemiah was the king's cupbearer in the palace. But when he heard of his beloved Jerusalem was in ruins, you know, AD 70, Jerusalem was attacked and it was destroyed. And he said, the walls of the temple are broken, everything's run down. It's just a heap of rubble. He felt the burden in his heart to change things from the way they are to the way they should be, to rebuild those walls. And to get things back into order again. That's Nehemiah. That's why he's known as such a great man of God. He was the king's cupbearer. He had a very prestigious position, well looked after. And yet a thousand miles away he dreamt of his beloved city. And he said, if only I can get there and help them. The walls are down. The people are dismayed. They're held captive. The whole place is now just a mound of rubble and he said to the king he said I've got a burden to go and rebuild the walls and I thought about it regarding the city of Perth when your heart resonates with a need you say you know what I I have a heart for that I have a heart for those people I have a heart for this street work or I have a heart whatever it is doesn't matter what it is you might be called to go to the rich and the famous They're, they're just as poor and needy as the poor and the needy it's a different kind of poverty But Nehemiah chapter 2 says his heart began to be burdened and he began to weep. And the depth of the call is reflected by what changes take place in your heart. Sometimes people say, oh yeah, I'm called to do this and this, but there's no heart change. There's no heart in it. It's just an outward form of religion. But when God puts something in your heart, guard it. Guard your heart. Because that's who you are. That's who God's made you. I hear some awesome dreams that people have of how they want to minister I mean I I know one girl in the city of Perth and her husband who's got a heart for the the gay community to such a degree that they are there all the time witnessing and loving and looking at others and say I'm not called to that well don't do it, they're called to it and in the midst of all the work they meet a lot of the prostitutes and they give witness to Christ and you know and God put a dream in her heart get this not to get an old camper van, but to make it into a pamper van and to go and look after them and make sure that they're looked after and help them with needs they have and pamper them. Can you imagine the religious spirits rising up with that? <laughs> i got a pamper van and I'm looking for people who really need that kind of help. My heart melted when I heard it. I thought, that is fantastic. Not everyone's called to do it, but if you've got the call, 
it'll burn within you like a burden and it won't lift easily. Some of you have had a burden in your heart for years and years and years and years and years. My question is this, how long? How long? There comes a time when you say, this is the time, this is the season. I've been cut back, I've been pruned, now I'm ready to rise up and bear fruit. It's fantastic what people are able to do. The goodness of God inside us will propel us in 2015 to do some things differently, to be in spheres of influence and witness to Christ and see lives changed. But you can't do it without fire. You've got to have fire. Paul says this with a demonstration of the power. Well, the power comes because of the fire that burns within you. And as we finish tonight, I thought we'd have what we call a good old-fashioned fire line we don't do it very often because it it can become frivolous and people say oh it's a bit of fun it's actually far more than fun it's the Holy Ghost fire coming down taking off dross finishing unresolved business and setting you on fire in, in, in another dimension to serve God some of you may want to be part of it others may want to observe others may want to run it's okay three people have never given their life to Christ tonight Who are you? We'd love to give you the opportunity to make a commitment. So anyone who's here, you're hearing what we're saying, you've never given your life to Christ. And tonight you're saying, I want to do that. Can you just indicate to me so I know who's in that category and would like to do that tonight? You can do it publicly, you can come afterwards. Publicly is good. Publicly is good. Who needs to be a Christian? And tonight's the night you want to be a Christian. Just give me a wave. We'd love to talk to people afterwards. Remember, we're on a journey. You can't push people into making the next step. You just have to lead by love. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you, Father God, that there are many Nehemiahs in this room. Those of us who have got a burden in our heart to serve you and to see things restored to order in this city and this nation. Father, there's a lot of grief on the nation at this point. But I thank you that the joy is coming in the morning. I thank you, Lord God, it will lift and the people will rejoice again in the streets. For we are going to go into the city and bear witness to Christ. We thank you for tonight. We thank you for the break. Pray for every family. (coughs) Just reach out to someone. Father, for families over the Christmas period, have your way with families, our mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters. Father God, let salvation fall upon our families, we pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. Others of us need a fresh baptism of fire. And we ask, Lord, that you come in that fire line and you burn. I just need a couple of guys to help me with that. See what happens, Jeff. If you sit in the front, you get used all the time, son. So Jeff will start up here and the fire line is from him around. People will say, I'm going to walk through the fire. We're praying for the fire to come and bring healing, deliverance, restoration. Anyone in it? Come line up behind him. Leaders, house church leaders, visiting pastors, come stand with me. We'll lay hands. Understand what you're doing. You're actually allowing God to come and just minister to you and touch you. Offer him the areas of weakness, unresolved issues, and just walk very slowly through. Even house group leaders are welcome to come. Jeff and Neris want to come and Visiting pastors and leaders come. You're going to go first or you, you, can, you can help me? Come, Neil. 